So uh, we are back uh, with Sam Shanklin and Peter Leko, who just finished the last game of the final round of the 52nd Build Chess Festival. And uh, we have a draw. And uh, well, Sam, you finished on the second spot, and Peter finished on the third spot of the tournament. Uh, but before we speak about uh, you know, summary and stuff like this, the game was fascinating. Let's just delve into the analysis. So uh, I think this was a pretty terrible game, um, but we'll see. Uh, so this is all extremely normal. And then uh, I actually had this a similar this position all the way up to this point with colors reversed against Le Quang Liam just like a month ago. Anyhow, I didn't really know much about Rook D8. My sense was it wasn't the best move, but I could easily be wrong. and. I somehow thought, at first I thought this position should be extremely good for whites because I had seen these structures before were often nice, but there's one key difference, which is my pawn is on b5, which means knight c5 is an actual plan. And so I have to be careful of that. For instance, my original intention was queen d2, so that g6 will never come, and I'm hoping, I don't even know what for, but for example, after takes, takes and simply queen d8, I think I might just be much worse actually, as knight d7 to c5 is going to be very annoying. So, by playing g3... Okay, let me, let me join yeah. in. Yeah. Is it on? Uh, it must be on, yes. It's yes, on, yeah? you will know yes, more than me. Yes. Uh, well, no, I just wanted to say that, uh, I mean, uh, from distance I saw that the position is quite harmless. And uh, I thought that I will just uh, handle this position quite easily. And then all of a sudden I started burning time and was uh, from black side not so comfortable because uh, yeah, there is always this queen d2 idea as well. There are ideas with f4 and uh, it's yeah. not clear when I should exchange, how long I should keep the tension. And uh, finally I focused my attention to f4. And then all of a sudden, rook e b1 came, which is of course the most natural thing white has in mind anyway. Probably yeah. f4 is ruled out, but... Well, I, I just, I know this position, if I have my pawn back on b4 and my other pawn on a5, black is very unpleasant. But with this pawn on b5, it may be different. So, um, king h2 was... What do you think about knight g2 as an idea? Um, I've, I somehow felt the knight would be misplaced. I. I kind of wanted to play king g2 and play for f4 with rook g1, but if knight g2, if he plays knight back to e7, for example, I don't. Exactly, that's what I intended. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, later on, I was kicking myself for putting the king on h2 instead of g2. I thought it, it's better on h2 if I want to play f4, but... Uh, yeah, but if you was game. play king g2, I would have never played the way I played, so right, you would so. not get... <laughs> but basically, this position around... I mean, just hang on. Instead of knight h5, if I go g6, you gonna go f4 or I not? I would have thought about it for yeah, sure, but... Because it's such a mess and uh, uh, I was completely out of control. I, I would I have mean, thought that... I mean, playing it from the white side, I would also not really like, but I mean, e, f, g, f, knight h5... Yes, I was considering this line, and I thought that it was complicated. Yeah, rook f6. And f5. Uh, yeah. And I don't know what's going on, but... Uh, yeah, because I have this queen d6 check. Uh, yeah, I mean, in fact, queen here, D6 I think check is, black is doing well. Uh, yeah, I mean, but, I should uh, have played g6, because this f4 looks like, okay, why to give? And the problem right, was that I spent a lot of time before playing king h7, and I was already calculating back then right. this kind of stuff, and that was... I, was I certainly good. would have burned time here. Rook f1 is not such a stupid move either, for what it's worth, um, but... But then I go knight h5. Then I kind of win a big tempo. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I at this point, clearly f4 is... But around here, after c5, after at this moment, I thought I should be much better somehow, and I think queen c4 was extremely lazy. Um, I missed this idea to play rook f6 and knight e6 to g5, which I think should equalize. Um, what do you think about this? This I should have played, and I think white is clearly better. After um, f5, knight d2, f4 or something, and okay, then... But white should be better even if g4 and yeah. f3 and my knight will come. This, I don't know how much, but this should be extremely pleasant. I also could throw c6, but I couldn't quite make this work so well because of this extremely annoying move when the rook comes to a8 and... I think black is okay. Yeah, and once my knight gets to e6, I'm quite happy. Yeah. 
Well, even this is not so clear if I bring my knight to c4. Yeah. I think it's very obvious compensation, but somehow I, I wouldn't be surprised if white is even better here, but I, I somehow didn't trust it that much, and I thought I could just make a move, but queen c4 was extremely careless because of this resource. I don't think either capture this way works so well, and then I was just extremely annoyed with myself after rook f6. Realistically, I should have been an adult and done something like this instead. When after knight g5, rook h1, I think this is just mutual stalemate and nobody can ever move, and this is just a draw. Mm -hmm. Unless I'm. But missed. okay, it's very uh, ugly for for white, yeah, yeah because you so are much. you are stalemated. I mean, I well, but, I but have king g7, queen c8, uh, and then. I mean, okay, you have to make a move. You just sit. Uh, you I know. thought this was a me just dead draw. I couldn't see anything for anybody to ever do. Well, I was excited, but clearly because before I felt like I'm under pressure, and yeah. here, yeah, I, I no, can I start No, I mean, this, this would have been the mature decision to realize I was better and I screwed up, but uh, I misjudged this position. Of course, knight c5 is not great. I think white has excellent winning chances in this endgame because of the following... Not f6, sorry. Because of the following line. And now I believe f4 and rook c1 is extremely strong because now after b6 and knight f3, I think white is pleasantly better. Yeah. If knight d3, I will give check and rook c6 and stuff will start falling. So this would have been good, but um, of course Peter made the right choice and I badly misjudged this position. I think if I just make a normal move, centralize the queen or something, it should be equal. If I just play rook f1, I can never be worse. It's just... I was actually expecting rook f1 and then draw him. Yeah? That's what I thought yeah. it was, but... Yeah. Uh, we too. But that, somehow I thing. thought I could bring my king to the queen side here and that white would be better, but... Yeah, and then all of a sudden I was, discovered this h5 because this I, haven't, I haven't seen this idea before. And uh, I spent a lot of time when I played h5, I was done to five minutes or something, but... This was a very strong move. Um, yeah. f5 was possible too, but in general, I, I think if white is going to be better if I simply bring my king in the next couple of moves and h5 was just extremely strong. And this I, I misjudged. Maybe king d2 is wrong, but I don't know what else to play. And uh, here I thought we were making a draw on the spot, actually. Uh, after knight e1, queen c4, I was expecting the game to conclude. And I think I must give a perpetual here, uh, because black's attack is too strong. Mm. But I completely missed queen f3, and now I'm probably lost. Mm. So... Uh, b3, I queen think f2, this b3. Is forced. Uh, and then I was shocked that king h6 did not come. I thought this was completely a winning for black. Yeah, I thought about this move and I even didn't um, dare to offer it. No, I just uh, yeah. run, take this pawn and get the king out of checks. So I thought I'm absolutely hopelessly lost here. Mm. Yeah. yeah, maybe, but I mean, king h6, you have this king b1 idea. Yes, and now king h5. Yeah, queen c1. Queen, king h, no, queen h. But there's no threat, right? Queen g5 made as a threat, so then I, hang on, king b1, what did I want here? Yeah, I mean, this wasn't so I clear to me. Was so what if we play like f6? What's White's next move? I, well, I don't know. Rook a2, rook a7. I mean, you have... Yeah. I, I, I wasn't simply evaluating this, that this is so good for me. I mean, I'm yeah. running I into thought, I thought this was to, just to something. King and 6 looks nice. Yeah. yeah, but king g7 and then rook, and a Wait, queen so f1. Wh how did you evaluate uh, this? Well, I thought that I'm just winning because I calculated this queen f1 and knight g2 and I, was, I thought that I'm winning and then all of a sudden time was ticking down and I triple checked my win and suddenly I saw some defense and I was going crazy and I started changing yeah. my mind. In this position or the next move? Next move. Okay. Yeah. So, so King G7, King I, G7. Yeah, I mean, I have to try this because if he takes H4 next, I will just lose. I mean, that's sort of what happened in the game anyway, but uh, yeah, uh, Queen, Queen E3 doesn't work, I don't think. I couldn't find a win for black after King B1. Yeah, because then you are running, running out. Yeah, yeah? but yeah. this was... Yeah, knight g oh, I could have played knight, and I should have played knight g two with time on the clock, and then it's it's just over. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maybe after queen f two, I, I don't know. I, I just couldn't bring myself to play. Queen b one, yeah. But queen takes h four. I thought this is just lost. Or is sorry, no, sorry. We'll start with um, knight f three. Isn't it a better version of the game? Maybe, but I wasn't yet convinced. I'm just. I mean, he was repeating moves. I thought I would, maybe I was foolish enough to believe. That he might be making a draw here, but uh, what if 
queen c2? Yes, and takes, and the queen comes back, and the knight comes back, and I just lose without a fight, as far as I can tell. Mm. Um, yeah, this is what uh, happened in the game, but even in a much better version for me. So, so. Yeah. I just wasn't. I just thought, you know, if this is lost, I might as well just repeat moves and see if he wants to make a draw. And There's no idea for rook a7, rook a8, and queen h2 at some point. So at this moment, here. Yeah, so let's say rook a7, rook a8 next, or and rook a8, and then knight g5, queen h2, or something. Just trying to survive for a moment. Yeah, I, maybe I could have tried this. It, I think I, I refuse to believe it's not lost, but... Okay. Yeah, somehow, I mean, it, yeah. I felt like, okay, my opponent is kind of agreeing that it's lost. Yeah. And I, I just have to go with the flow and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the move 60, maybe I just started I blundering. I mean, when move. everything uh, was... Maybe I should have played this move, but... No, this loses is by four. This is we're still this is Queen of C3 is coming. Yeah, right? okay. Yeah. No, no, Queen B3 was on the one. Yeah, I mean, I saw yeah, but this. Wait, but wait. No, but Knight E3 is... I so mean, Queen E1 is a win, yeah, but... Uh, we didn't check uh, until the end, but Vidit was seated with us, and we looked at this line, and here we thought that this is winning, uh, with this idea, and Knight E3 of King C1, Knight C3 of yeah. King A1. Yes. Yeah, and after King A3, this. the critical shot was Knight C2 followed by Queen D1, and it wasn't easy to, like, we didn't really uh, calculate until the end, but it seems like either c5 or d3 is going to fall yeah, and the position collapses. In I bet, I also, queen a2? Queen a2, queen d3, and queen b5 is a threat. Ah, I bet also I refuse to believe what Peter did was wrong. This is, I mean, uh, yeah, but, uh, knight f4 just wins without much discussion. So just Yeah, queen, but I should have done it with 40 minutes on the clock and then it's yes. just over. Yeah, I, yes. I, I mean, I was trying to make this so, queen e1 uh, stuff so work. Yeah, I, I don't think there's any real. Just play another for hit the clock. Of but course. just a quick question for Sam. In case you had six minutes on the clock, let's say in this position as black, would you calculate queen e1 all the way until no, just knight f4? Just knight f4. No, not risking uh, no, no. being in time pressure. No, no, just game's finished. As soon as I would notice this trick, takes and then queen f1 check and then knight takes c5. Once mm -hmm. you see that, you just play knight f4 and hit the clock. Okay. And you don't. You don't need to be beautiful. You don't need to be sexy. You can just win the game. Okay. And so, uh, this is what Peter chose? Yes, and here, I mean, I'm just hopelessly lost. I don't know why I would play g5 instead of knight e6. There's no rush. This is absolutely finished. Um, because c5 is falling and everything's protected. Well, I don't think you want to take c5 next because of queen a3, but, like, just keep everything safe and then win. Like, So, for example, queen a3 or something, what is the move for black? Like, just no. to push now? Maybe king f6 even, just to play knight c5 next and have the queen protected in the event of rook a5. I mean, there's... Mm. It should win very routinely. Like, also, now my queen is completely stuck. I have no way to bring her to, like, harass this part of the board. I th I, th I mean, this, I think, is extremely easy. No, okay, you go king c2. I mean... Uh, and then, can we play queen takes c5 check? I take rook a5. Um, yeah, and then it's actually a little annoying, isn't it? I, think I mean, okay, it's winning, but then I thought that, okay, why not just to queen this g pawn as well? Yeah. I mean, no, okay. that, that wins very easily. Takes, takes, just bring the... This wins, this is a very easy win. Takes, takes, rook a5 and knight d7. And yeah, rook a7. Yes, and this is very easily winning. Knight comes to e7 and then too many pawns, king e6, f5, yeah, just, be, just yeah. wins well, easily. Okay, it's still not that clear to okay. me. But yeah, it's I don't know. Anyhow, this maybe king a2. Maybe I should have put the king on a1 just to avoid any checks. But it, of course, I should still be lost no matter how I play. Mm -hmm. And here, um, I don't even know what to say. I think I just got lucky. Um, I actually might have resigned if I had known there was a third time control. But once move 60 came and there was more time here, uh, Peter was No, saying. simply just king g6 and it's resigns, yeah, that's... Uh, yeah, king b3, queen... And then just slowly so. I'm, I'm just... Yeah, what, what's the point? Sorry? King g6 and then king b3 you play? No, okay, or? just not to, not to push this pawn to d3 and then you just win this slowly. Uh, yeah. but by what plan? Just to show the viewers? Like, uh, no, I mean... You know? uh, Probably knight h5 followed by g3 is a good start. This will ask my queen what she wants and force me to make some kind of unpleasant decisions. Um, mm. But... Then g3 and... Uh, and well, I don't know what my next move is either. Um, 
yeah, I mean, it looks... Uh, but, I mean, simply I saw that D3 just ends the game immediately or move 60. Usually you are not supposed to make such a radical decision on move 60, yeah, but I, I saw that this D2 is just checkmate and I completely blundered this King C1 and King C2. Yeah, I mean, okay, it's ridiculous. But, I mean, here, I mean, I just... I don't know if you see a direct one, but if you can just imagine giving up both the D and the B pawns and hoping that there is checkmate, I don't th even if there is, I don't think there's a reason to do it. Just push the G-pawn and yeah. the queen will be passive because it cannot uh, yeah, protect Yeah, I mean, G2. you have to find a way to do that, but it shouldn't be crazy difficult. Yeah. Um, so D3 was a mistake and then... And here I don't think... I mean, I was surprised by King G6 as well. Um, queen D7? I or? was expecting this move, yes, which I think should still be winning. Um, and okay, uh, yeah. There's always Knight G6. Yeah, no, King C1, yeah. Yes, and now... Um, I thought, for instance, was this check good enough? Yeah, king d1. I know, knight d3. Rook a2. This is crazy that white has rook a2. I actually considered this to be over in, in the time trouble. I wanted to end the game like yeah. this. And then I spotted this rook a2. I, I uh, mean, it should be lost, this but... This one is just bad. Yeah. No, this is Isn't bad. There yeah. another knight down? Okay, here I can just take on e4 right. as well. Yeah. So, wait, wait. Uh, here? And knight, 92? Yeah, 92 was the other, but then rook a3. And g3? Yeah, that was the... I mean, I saw these two wins, uh, both g3. with knight d3 and with, uh, and, uh, with knight e2. And then here queen h1 comes. What? <laughs> no. Ah, but then queen g4, no, no. yeah. Ah, then... Okay, of course, yeah, this is... It should be easy enough. Ah, no, queen f1 you go. No, not... Ah, queen is on h4. G2. Ah, okay, yeah. So no, no, the, the queen is on h4. I saw that white can go queen f1. Yeah. Ah. I mean, yeah, the, those those were the lines that I saw on move 60. Yeah, I mean, once you've played d3, you have to be looking for this. After d2, I wouldn't be surprised if this is a draw, actually. I couldn't find a win for black, at least. Yeah. No, okay, I mean, let me explain. My blunder was simply based on I saw queen d7 and it's checkmate. And that king c1, 92 check, king c2 is possible. I mean, okay, this is just... R r yeah. Ridiculous. Um, I mean, of course, I have seen all the other wins, but uh, my guess is black is still winning here. Um, but it's probably not so easy anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe f5 or king g5 or something, and just try to maybe f5. Um, my guess is this still is winning, but it's going to take a lot of work. Wow. Yeah, and okay, I was down to to one. Mi I still believe that this queen this knight d4 is a good chance, and I'm. And I'm sure that it's it's good, but okay, I just uh, started blundering mates in yeah, one and things I like this. I mean, here I thought Rick B8 was the best try, um, just to make this pawn as dangerous as possible. Uh, yeah. And Queen takes G3 traps. Yeah, okay, but it's kind of optimistic. Um, but also, there were traps with Rook G8 check and Rook F8. Um, Mm -hmm. In some cases, where yeah, and and here queen queen b5 check was strong, I think. And uh, after king c1. And queen takes c5. And king d1. And, and I just b4, move yeah, queen. I don't know where, but we didn't find a continuation here. In fact, queen b4 is what I was concerned with, but now I have queen a2. Yeah, that's why me. Uh, but if queen a, yeah, this this just I saw. Just yeah. come, but I mean no. Queen no, d2 that check. is messy. No. Queen d2 check. It's not messy. White wins. Uh, uh, no, so, yeah, that was the question, where to put the queen? King on d1? Can I, I? I couldn't find a win here. At this point, I was actually thinking if we got here and Peter has a minute that I might actually have winning chances for the first time in, like, 50 moves. Maybe just 40. But um, it's not that easy to stop this pawn. Mm -hmm. I mean, the queen a5. Then queen b2. Yes, and... Yeah. I'm yeah, no, alive. it's... Uh, also... <sighs> it's a possible check and check. No, no, the king will escape. You cannot take e5. Yeah, um, this is. I, I, if there's a win here, I didn't see it. But uh, I guess I was lucky to get away with one today. Yes, and uh, Peter, what do you think about this uh, game overall? Like. Uh Sam was lucky or was he skillful in the defense? Yeah, no, okay. Of course, it was incredibly lucky because it already had nothing to do with Sam. It only had uh, with my stupidity. And, uh, okay, as I said yesterday, yeah, somehow the tension is uh, getting to me so much that my brain just stops working. So, basically, the opponent is not needed at all. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, in the beginning, uh, in the opening, I think Sam played very nicely. 
And uh, back then, if one would say, yeah, do, do, I mean, I would be very happy. Uh, but of course, all of a sudden, what has happened, and uh, I have seen all the wins, and then not to win, clear disappointment. Yeah. Also, very big disappointment. But uh, the only good thing is that the tournament is over finally. There is <laughs> yeah. no tie break. Yes, Obvious, no tie break. <laughs> obviously, I was also unhappy with this game after what I thought playing a very good game, getting a pleasant advantage with White against someone for whom that does not happen basically ever, and. Uh, then to just sort of throw it all away like that. I mean, my form has just been awful. I mean, I guess the only way I can actually beat Peter is if he plays queen b5 and drops the queen in one move. But because this was, I was supposed to just be better and I managed to get myself into this. But um, I am also proud of myself that uh, even when this tournament's on bikes and even this year has just been absolutely horrible. That's I still, while looking at a completely lost position, just fought as hard as I could and tried to take every chance I could get. Yeah. Well, uh, obviously, I should have lost this game, but um, it's not the first time I, you've been doing it. Before. I could have lost in one move uh, many times if I had been a little more careless, and instead, being lost in five moves at various moments was, I guess, tougher. And so, I'm glad I was able to offer some resistance even when things were going really wrong. Yeah, very, very good. Uh, like uh, sportsmanship and also like uh, ability to fight in any position and uh, I wouldn't consider it luck if it happens like so often even in the blitz and rapid it happened a lot okay, and it's is like just yeah but I mean you have a tendency to pose uh, problems to the opponents in any time control in any position that's bad and that's a uh, good quality and uh, we are uh, very happy to to have seen uh, like uh, what happened behind the scenes and uh, what you guys thought about and probably because it's the end of the tournament and uh, and uh, we had a, an interesting uh, experience here with both of you. We should ask you, uh, Sam, you can start. How was your experience in Beal and uh, overall? Well, obviously I'm very dissatisfied with my play, uh, but Beal has always been one of my favorite cities. This is my sixth time playing here and I certainly hope I can come back next year. I hope they invite me again because this was a fantastically run tournament uh, where, you know, I, Clearly, it was challenged a lot because I played so badly. This you don't usually play badly if your opponents aren't putting any pressure on you, and so I was very glad to play a strong event. And this is, as I said, one of my absolute favorite cities, and I'm just really glad to be back for the sixth time. And I hope next year is the seventh. Mm -hmm. And how did you find the formats so far? Would you um, um, would you like to? Uh, I don't mind, especially the, the three points. I don't mind the format at all. I. I think it was a lot of fun and really interesting. Uh, it didn't really matter this year because Vidit just killed it in the Classical, so no matter what would have happened in the Blitz or Rapid, he's still going to win the tournament. But uh, uh, the format was fine. I, I would have liked maybe more Classical games, just because seven Classical games doesn't feel like much. But um, yeah, this was... I, I certainly enjoyed it. I have no complaints. My job is to play chess, not to choose the format. So despite the uh, relatively... Uh let's call it uh, below your standard score that you had you had a lot of fun here and uh, yes of course i mean uh, you, there's nice places to play chess and not so nice as to play chess and uh, Beal is one of the absolute best and i'm i was just so happy to have been invited and i really hope i can be back next year oh. and uh, peter yeah i mean playing in a traditional tournament uh, somehow is always very very nice and uh, it puts also responsibility you know that okay you are fighting for the audience, you are fighting for the tradition, and uh, the whole tournament had been, of course, extremely tough, a lot of challenges. Okay, for myself, I don't know what to expect, because if you don't really play for eight months, and uh, basically you are coaching and working on the completely different openings than what you are playing yourself, is uh, very, very demanding. And uh, basically my biggest problem is uh, simply to remember my preparation. It's not like I don't have preparation. I have preparation, but I haven't looked at it for, for quite some time. And it's psychologically extremely unpleasant when you know that, okay, if I would put in more time on my own, then uh, things could be completely different. But uh, okay, it's, uh, it's kind of very difficult to be coach and, uh, and the player at the same time. However, right now I think I'm already more of a coach. Uh, so I was very happy that there were a lot of games and a lot of excitement in the tournament. I just uh, wanted to play chess. I wanted to, 
I mean, I before the tournament, I always think I want to enjoy. But whenever it comes and the tension comes, then this whole joy disappears. And uh, yeah, when, whenever you suddenly see your clock sticking down, then my just brain stops. I mean, some other guys like Max Todlu and Corey in the Blitz also, when they had like two, three seconds, uh, they are completely calm, they are making the best moves. I have like 30 seconds on the clock, better position, and I already feel that if my clock will also tick down, then it's lost. I will just blunder anything that, uh, that comes in the way. Uh, uh, I think the format is very interesting. However, I'm not sure if it's entirely correctly set, but okay, one needed experience because I'm not sure if this rapid classical blitz classical is the right Order. way right order because i mean uh, maybe it would be better to get rid of the the blitz. the blitz and the rapid as quickly as possible then also you know the score and then in the classical where you get three points you can put all your efforts you can still come back uh, basically if you and maybe also if you start with the blitz then there is not so much pressure on the blitz because you are not spoiling your tournament you mm. just feel like okay the tournament just starts uh, so, but uh, it was the first time, it's a triathlon. I kept on playing the longest games every day. You remember I complained yesterday and you said, no, no, tomorrow it won't be so long and <laughs> here we are, yeah. Uh, but, but it had been a great, uh, great experience. It's always a pleasure to, to play here. Uh, it's my second time and uh, always so many ups and downs are happening, but the tournament is just uh, fun to play. Awesome. So the city and everything, the, like... Uh... Yeah, I mean, somehow the weather is very tricky because at the beginning it's always very, very hot. Then some rain is coming, then you have to adjust, but... Uh, Just okay, like your summer. games. Exactly. The rain is like a <laughs> blitz tournament in the beginning, in the yes. middle of the uh, classical one. Yes, so I'm sure everyone are very tired uh, from the all the days that, uh, that came before this day and now you play the last uh, game and had the longest interview so we appreciate uh, ev every time you came here and you're sharing your insights about the game about the other games and giving uh, us and the viewers a lot of very useful tips so uh, for one last time uh, thanks a lot for uh, Sam Shankland and Peter Leko for joining us and we'll be back uh, to wrap up the tournament after a short break <laughs>